And now, Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the universe of the uncanny, to the land from which no traveler returns, alive or sane. It can be reached so many ways, down trails of terror, along paths of peril, or, strangely enough, through bustling city streets. There are no markers that tell you when you cross the frontier of fear. But once you do, there is no mistaking the horror that lies ahead. I suppose I should be frightened by your cheap tricks, whatever you are. But I'm not. I'm going now. And I warn you, you will regret it! Well, she's gone, Harry. For good, Gladys will never trouble us again. What happened? What did you do to her? Can't you guess, Harry? We eliminated her. We typed her into an early grave. You didn't have to go that far. I could have handled her. I couldn't take the chance, Harry. You forced my hand. You divulged our little secret. And I'm not quite ready for that yet. mystery drama, The Frontier of Fear, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Milt Wissoff and stars Jerry Stiller. One expects to find terror in a haunted house or on the barren, wind-swept plains of the Aztec pyramids. But it is even more intense when it is encountered on the streets of a modern metropolis. In our little tale, Harry Dorn meets the unfathomable as he crosses the threshold of a pawn shop. But why not let Harry describe his frightening journey in his own words? Listen to me, please. Whoever finds this tape, hear me through, or it's curtains. Not for me. I'm a dead duck, no matter what happens. But for you, and for everyone else in the whole world. I know you think this is a gag, but it's not. You gotta believe me. I never prayed before, but I do now. I'm Harry Dorn. Nobody. Small-time con man, losing horse player. Dead-end Dorn. That's how I think of myself. My life was a series of ups and downs. Mostly downs. Never as down as the day I walked into Flint's pawn shop. That's a good name for him. His heart is made of it. Morning. What can I do for you? Oh, it's you, Harry. Don't get all choked up, Flint. This is no touch. And what have you got in your mind? I don't know. Just dropped in. What will you give me for this? Tell me what it is first. You really don't know? <laughs> How about that? These are the silks our Cairo rode when he won the Derby on citation. So what? So it's history. Only the creeps like you, sorry, no sale. Take it for only 25 bucks. It's worth a lot more. I'll tell you what I'll do. Pick out anything in that corner, anything, and I'll trade you even. That way nobody loses. But I need eating money for it. Take it or leave it. I was going to leave when I heard this voice inside my head, like... Someone jamming the circuits in my brain. Take the typewriter, Harry. Take the typewriter. It went on and on in my head, over and over. I was powerless. Take that typewriter, laying there with all that junk. I made the swap and I walked off with the typewriter. When I got home, I couldn't stand looking at it. It was an absolute piece of junk that couldn't possibly work. Dirty, old, and useless. 
I kept staring at it, trying to turn it into a steak with all the trimmings. And that's when it happened. I found myself putting in a piece of paper, and I began pecking at the keys. Somehow, the typewriter took over. I didn't know how or why, but there I was, typing away. Something, someone was making my fingers move, making me type out words, sentences. It was weird. I couldn't stop myself. Pretty soon, I was banging away like I knew what I was doing. I looked at what I typed, and I couldn't believe it. A bunch of dopey poems. I was going to throw them away when the voice I heard at the pawn shop took over again. It planted an idea in my mind. Maybe what I had written was worth something. So I trotted the poems down to a song plugger I know, and he said I was in the wrong place. Take it to Gladys Morgan, a literary agent, he says. Maybe she might dig it. And she did. Mr. Dorn, I'm so delighted you could come. Oh, please have a seat. Now, I've got good news for you. Your book of poems is most enchanting. I'm glad you liked it. How much... Now, I know you'll be happy to hear that Merton Brothers will publish your poems. The money. How much do I get and when? Oh, you poets are so impetuous and so direct. Well, I've got a small advance for you. Here. A hundred bucks? Is that all? That's the best I could get. You know, poetry is a modest market. But there will be more when the book is published and reviewed. A hundred bucks? I was hoping I hit the jackpot. Well, keep on writing, Harry. And you may. The hundred didn't last long. I paid the rent, had my stake, and I played a few hunches. I stayed away from the typewriter, but when I blew my last fiver, I sat down and started to type again. Who knows, I thought. Maybe lightning could strike twice. It wasn't long before the mysterious voice took charge. I typed for days without any rest. I blacked out, and when I came to, there was a pile of pages stacked neatly next to the typewriter. It was a short story, a murder mystery. I read a little bit of it, but it turned my stomach too bloody. But I sent it, I sent it off to Gladys anyhow. I didn't have anything to lose. Guess what? Another sale. And the bread came in like manna from heaven. I was sitting on top of the world until I got a visit. Who's there? Police. What do you want? You Harry Dorn? That's right. Did you write this story? Death on a side street. Sure I did. Anyone says I didn't is a cockeyed liar. How did you tumble on it? I dreamt it up. All of it. Right out of my head. Did you read this morning's paper? Not yet. Why? Take a peek at the headline. Gang chief slain. So what? It happens all the time. Read the story. See if it sounds familiar. You had the guy killed in your story by a mortar shell, right? It's a little weird, but you got to have a gimmick today to sell your stuff. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, uh, read the item in the paper. There. See how Esposito was wiped out. A mortar shell? Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? I didn't think those bums could read. So uh, you're claiming they copied it from your novel, huh? Well, what else could it be? We'll find out, Mr. Dorn. Uh, we'll find out at headquarters, one way or another. They dragged me down and worked me over for a couple hours, but they couldn't hold me. The lawyer Gladys hired had me sprung. I was pretty well shaken by the time I got home. I sacked out for about 24 hours, and then I went back to my usual routine. It didn't take long before I was in my usual condition tapped out. My investments betrayed me, six straight losers on the NFL cards, and two days of dogs at Belmont. I had to get back to that infernal machine, the typewriter. This time I tried to do my own thing. I tried writing about an actual incident out of my own life, but 
came out garbage. Even I could recognize it was trash. A crumpled sheet after sheet of paper. That's when I heard the voice for the first time. Right out of the guts of the typewriter. Really heard it right outside my own head. Get up, Dorn. Look at you. You're a miserable sight. Can't be. I'm just hearing things. A typewriter that talks. I must be going off my rocket. No, you're not. I exist, and what I say is real. Who are you? What are you? To start with, I am not a typewriter. I control it like I control you. You're both equally primitive mechanisms. Look, pal, I don't have to take that from you. No. Who were you kidding? I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. You were a petty chiseler when I found you. You found me? Of course, you fool. You didn't have any choice in the matter. Uh... Please, uh, what do I call you? It doesn't matter. In my world, I'm known as... What is your equivalent? A uh, Gan. All right, Mr. Gan. Clue me in, will you? Just a little. Well, I can do things. I can read what you call the future. Or I can make things happen. Either way, I don't like it. Put your fingers on the keys. This time the story was kind of science fiction. Crazy, weird. Then the ending really got to me. A tidal wave that sweeps across the ocean and wipes out an island in the Pacific, killing every living thing. I wanted to throw the damn thing into the garbage can, but I was flat. So I pedaled it, and sure enough, it came to pass. This is your six o'clock news. A spectacular tidal wave inundated the tiny island of Kunjera in the Pacific Ocean, killing more than 100,000 people. All those lives washed away because I had a gambling habit. I felt guilty as hell and I made up my mind to get rid of the typewriter. And... Mr. Gann. What do you think you're doing, Harry? I'm getting rid of you, once and for all. I can't go on helping you slaughter people. I got a conscience, man. What's that? You really don't know, do you? Why should I? I'm not human, you know. What is this conscience? It's hard to explain. Let me see. You know, uh, there's a good and a bad. Like uh, you don't squeal or welsh in a bet or put down a friend. Well, the worst thing you can do is to kill somebody. That's when you feel rotten. That's your conscience working. But you people take life all the time. You eat other organisms. That's different. I'm talking about human life. And you keep slaughtering each other day after day. We get punished for that. Not all the time. I could see I was getting nowhere with Mr. Gunn. I was in the grip of a force way beyond me. I started to type again. Don't ask me why, I couldn't help myself. Suddenly, I heard this rapping at the door. I kept quiet, hoping whoever it was would go away, but they didn't. I could hear the plastic card slipped in between the door and the lock, and then the door swung open. Hello, Harry. Uh, you didn't answer, so I tried the door and... Uh... It was open. You mean you jimmied it open, Pete? That wasn't nice. It's uh, not nice to keep your friends waiting, especially friends who have been so patient with you. If it's the money I owe... That's exactly what it is, money. When are you going to get the scratch up? I'm expecting it any minute. I'll drop it by in the morning. No way. The boss wants the bread now. Just 
Well, look, just just hang hang on for a minute, will you? I want to finish something I was typing. I ain't got much time. <laughs> hey, what's that you're writing? Your farewell address? <laughs> no, it says the door opens and a messenger delivers a package containing five hundred dollars. Yeah, and I'm Cinderella. How do you like that, pal? Hey, hey, hey! You stop it, will you? Just a few more minutes. Rapid messenger. Here. Thanks. I'll take that. Here, here's something for you, kid. Well, <laughs> I'll be 500, all right. Uh, I'll take what you owe, Harry. Uh, so long, pal, and uh, thanks for saving both of us a lot of trouble. <laughs> that was close, Harry. Too darn close. Why did you wait so long? To teach you a lesson. One you must never forget. Okay, okay. You made your point. Good. We've got our most important work ahead. Until now, I've just been feeling my way to make sure I had everything down pat. Now I've got complete control over you. The strange voice that comes to Harry through the ether, or is it inside his head, has displayed its awesome powers. Powers that can reach across time and space, can make or unmake events. But for what purpose? We'll learn more when we return shortly with Act Two. In this age of computers, we're accustomed to machines that can work wonders. Have you ever thought of the day when we'll come up with a machine that can go far beyond the capabilities of the computer, one that can instead reverse the process and program man for, well, let's find out what Mr. Gan intends for Harry Dorn. The next few weeks were kind of peaceful, like Mr. Gan was going through a phase. He seemed to be preparing for some big event. He had me lug in all kinds of books from the library, and I, I kept typing this stuff word for word. He had me copying the Department of Defense budget, line for line. I darn near wore out my fingers. After I'd been at it for about ten straight hours, I felt I'd had it right up to here. I stopped typing and I, I started rubbing my fingers to restore the circulation. I haven't told you to stop. Look, pal, my fingers are numb, my nerves are frazzled, and I'm just plain pooped. I need rest. Whatever for? I guess you don't understand that, do you? Oh, well, if you must... But don't shut your eyes too long. Hold it. Why? Somebody knocks at your door at one in the morning. You wait for them to go away. I'll, I'll bet it's them goons. Why should they pay you a visit? You've cleared your obligation to them. Thanks to me. It's Gladys, Harry. Please open the door. I know it's late, but I must talk to you. <laughs> okay, okay, just a minute. Oh, thank you. Now, why haven't I heard from you, Harry? I didn't have anything to say. I just wanted to know why you... Why you... Why I what? Why you've decided to leave me for another agent. But that's crazy. I never... Oh, don't play with me, Harry. I got your note. What, what are you talking about? What note? Oh, here. Here, read for yourself. But I never wrote it. Oh, I get it. It's your doing, Mr. Gunn. You had me write it, and I sent it without reading it. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Oh, poor Harry. You've been working too hard. It's not me. 
It's that typewriter. Mm-hmm. Gladys, I'm going to show you something that'll knock your hat off. You think I wrote them poems and all that, that other junk? Oh, I, I believe anything you say. Sure, sure. Well, the truth is that the typewriter, or rather, Mr. Gann, does all the brain work. Watch. Come closer, Gladys. Just watch what comes out. In the early hours of the morning, the city was asleep. Darkness blotted out the pressures and the torment of the day. Pretty classy. I never had any education, Gladys. I just sit there and punch the keys under his direction. It is true, Miss Morgan. <gasps> oh, what? This lame brain would be hard put to write simple declarative sentences by himself, let alone this magnificent output. <laughs> Who are you? What kind of trick is this? No trick, my dear. What Harry told you is absolutely correct. Oh, it's too bad, however. Too bad he insisted on telling you. What are you talking about? Type, Harry. Type until I tell you to stop. I typed for a few minutes. And then? That's enough, Harry. Now read this, Miss Morgan. I will not. You may have him under your control, but not me. Goodbye, Harry. Gladys Morgan turned to go. She was this rot. But she would have been terrified if she only knew... Don't go, Gladys! Don't leave now! If she only knew what fate awaited her... On the other side of the door. <coughs> well, she's gone, Harry. Gone for good. Gladys will never travel us again. What did you do to her? Can't you guess, Harry? We typed her into an early grave. Why did you have to do that? You forced my hand, Harry. You divulged our little secret. And I'm not quite ready for that yet. I fell asleep that morning just as the light started to come up. I was exhausted. And when I awoke, I, I, I poked my head out of the door carefully, not knowing what I'd see. But the scene was the same as usual. The morning paper was waiting. No one had swiped it, even though it was late. It's not in there. What's not in there? How do you know what I'm looking for? If you want to know what happened to Gladys, just ask. Maybe I don't want to know. Maybe last night never happened. Is that you, Gladys? It's a police door and open up. Were you expecting Gladys Morgan? Why not? She's my agent. When did you see her last? Uh, I don't know. Uh, why? Is it important? Very important. We found her. Dead. D dead? How did it happen? I thought you might know. <sighs> Me? How would I know? I haven't seen her for days. Okay, Dawn, get your clothes on. All right, all right. I, I did see her last night, but only for a few minutes. She was okay when she walked out of that door. I think you better come along with me anyhow. <sighs> okay, okay. I, I heard her scream after she left, but when I went out to see her, she was gone. Type, Harry. Type. What was that? Who, who you got here? Nobody. I, I was just thinking out loud. Can I use the typewriter for a moment? I, I, I just got to put one thought down before I forget it. Okay, but hurry it up. The moment was tense, fraught with danger. Then suddenly the phone rang, cutting through the tension like a stiletto. It was news about the corpse, news that established beyond a doubt his innocence. Hello? Who? Yeah, he's here. It's for you, Lieutenant. Yeah, okay. Hello. Mm-hmm. You sure? 
A full confession? We gave the statement voluntarily, huh? Okay, I'll be down in about 15 minutes. Uh, I want to talk to him myself. Bad news, Lieutenant? Not for you. We got a lead on a suspect. Mrs. Morgan's ex-husband. He had motive and opportunity. A cab driver drove him near where we found her body. Then I'm in the clear. So far. But uh, don't try to leave the city until I give you the word. Understand? I wouldn't think of it, Lieutenant. Now say thank you, Harry. Thanks for nothing. You got me into that mess. You owed it to me. I owe you nothing, Harry. Remember that at all times. Well, at least the law's off my back. You seem relieved. Sure I'm relieved. I'm not in a pokey. You feel relieved, even though you know someone else will suffer for a crime he didn't commit. But I didn't do it either. Of course you didn't. But your information could clear him. What about your precious conscience? I don't want to get mixed up in murder. You mean if he takes the rap, as you would put it, then you're free and clear? Isn't that true? How did I ever get into this fix? Why did I ever walk into that stupid pawn shop? It wasn't a free choice, Harry. I picked you. For what? I asked you that before. What are you going to do with all that information that I've been typing? I've already told you, Harry. You'll be the first to know when the time comes. It hit me while I was typing this... this encyclopedia for Mr. Gann. Sure he had me. But in a way, I had him too. Somehow, he still needed my muscle power to move the keys. I couldn't figure out why he couldn't do it for himself, since he could do so many other things. But the fact remained, Mr. Gahn had no way of moving the keys without me. Quite commendable, Harry. You do have some low cunning. How did you know what I was... I was thinking. I'm in your mind all the time. What is this great inspiration you've had? You ought to know. You. Oh, my head! It aches! I'm waiting, Harry. I, I, I want you to help me get back at some of the rats who put me down. Is that all? Look, Harry. I am not a genie caught in a bottle. Waiting to do your bidding. Okay, then then I go on strike. No help, no typing. Nonsense. Well, tell me what you want. Only let's not waste too much time. We have much to do. Okay, I want the bookie hit big. I want him wiped out. That's it? To start with. The other two little favors depend on how this works out. All right. Start typing. I put a fresh sheet of paper in the machine and hit the keys. I didn't even bother reading it. All I could see was Pete and his boss going down the chute. You can stop now, Harry. When will it happen? Go down and buy a late paper. You mean now? That quick? Okay. Turn to page 37, Harry. Column two. Bookie found slain. Dead. Who asked you to? You did. I just wanted them cleaned out, not killed. I just set it in motion. Natural law took over after that. Let's not waste any more time. What are your other two favors? I don't know if I still want them. Not if they end this way. They don't have to. Tell me what you want, or back to the typewriter. Don't rush me. Let me think. Okay, here they are. I want my old man to retire. He's worked hard all his life, and I'd like to see him stop. His pension doesn't start for three years more. Make it due now. And the other favor? 
My sister, she's had it pretty tough. She and her husband are just making it. It's hard on the kids. I want her to come in to some bread, enough to, to make life easier for them. Done and done. Just hit the typewriter, Harry. All the time I was typing, I felt myself pulling back, trying to make my fingers stop. Somehow, some way, I knew what I was doing was wrong. Hello? Yeah, it's me. What's that? No. No, I can't believe it. A heart attack? How did it happen? Well, how's he doing now? I see. He'll pull through, but he'll never be able to work again? <laughs> yeah, I'll meet you at the hospital in about 15 minutes. Goodbye. You, you murderer! You, you can't do anything good if you tried! Why did you have to do that to my father? I just set the wheels in motion, Harry. I don't steer the vehicle. Call off the other favor. I don't want your help anymore for anything. It's too late, Harry. Read what you've typed. On the way home from work, George Masters was mugged in a subway passageway. He died of wounds received in the struggle. You, you, swine, you, you, you... His wife was the sole beneficiary of a $100,000 life insurance policy. There you are, Harry, all taken care of. Now back to the typewriter, or I'll be forced to take care of you. Men have been slaves of many base emotions. Greed, lust, power. But few have ever been in such complete thraldom to a machine. Harry Dorn's weakness and cowardice, his instinct to survive above all other considerations, has in a sense permitted this malignant force to draw him deeper and deeper into servitude. Where will it all end? We'll know when we return shortly with Act Three. Man is such an imperfect vessel. He can sell or destroy anything he holds dear, his dreams, his love, his country, even his soul. But all of us have at least a grain of nobility in us, one small flame that can, when called upon, illuminate the corner of the world we live in. Even so base and useless a man as Harry Dorn cannot extinguish this frail light. I was getting in deeper and deeper. I was losing almost all control over myself, my actions. The worst of it was that I didn't know what <laughs> Mr. Gan was up to, but I knew somehow it would end in disaster. I think I've indulged you long enough. Sit down and start typing. Why should I? Because I ordered you to do so. Who cares about your... Oh, my head! Sit down, Harry. <laughs> I can't. My headaches. How about that? It's gone. I feel great. Say, did you do that? Of course. Now, will you sit down? I can reward or punish you. That's the free choice you have. Type or suffer. What would you do? Take the carrot instead of the stick? Well, that's what I did, too. So, I started to type. And this time, it was for keeps. No poems or novels, but some kind of crazy technical thing. Pages and pages and pages. I worked day and night, hardly stopping for food or rest. I kept at it until I, until I blacked out. 
And when I awoke, I was sitting at the table, my head on the typewriter. It's about time you woke up. You certainly are a strange mechanism. You suffer things like fatigue, hunger. Every machine needs rest, lubrication. I need something to eat and a beer. All right. But get back as soon as you can. Sure. But what do I use for dough? Money. I need it to buy things. Type me a few winners. Type you what? A few winners. Give me the results of today's races now, and I'll bet them. That will give me the money I need. Okay. Sit down. I typed the results of the fifth and sixth races at Aqueduct. Blood money, five to one, and fate, eight to one. You win again, Harry. Fate, 17 to two. Not bad. <laughs> Who tipped you? I can't divulge my source, but just remember, this is only the beginning. Sure, Harry, sure. I, I dig. Yeah. I'll be back tomorrow for more action. Anytime, kid. You're hot. <laughs> and you know what they say. When you're hot, you're hot. Go for broke. <laughs> Not this time. I got it all psyched out. A new system that can't miss. Yeah, and I'm going to be Miss America this year. <laughs> Wait and see, wise guy. Wait and see. It's about time you got back. What am I supposed to do? Punch a time clock? Count your blessings. I came back at all. Oh, I wasn't worried about that for a moment. Now, shall we do a little work? Why not? You give a little, I give a little. Start typing, Harry. I typed through the night. By the time the sun started to come through, I had piled up a ton of paper. It's a lucky thing the pages were numbered. Otherwise, I'd never know how to put it all together. We're not through yet, Harry. We are for now. I need a little shut-eye, and then I'll... I'll be set again. Oh, very well. But don't take too long. Don't worry. I'll set the alarm to make sure. I'm happy you decided to cooperate. What is this stuff I'm typing? Sounds screwy. Disintegrator and assembly unit. Interspatial disturber unit. Sounds like some kind of invention. You could describe it that way. Uh, who cares? Oh, before I forget, type me out the winners for tomorrow. I mean, today. I'm going to show them what Harry Dawn is made out of. I shouldn't think you'd want to do that. Mr. Gunn, you here? Yes, Harry, still here. Guess what? The card, we swept it. Daily double, four exactors and a triple. I had to move around to several bookies before the day was over. They couldn't handle it all. Did you get it? Not all of it. They're going to deliver the rest in a few days. I'm riding high. Next day, I was even feeling kindly to Mr. Gunn. I got to the table early and typed away all day. I figured I could skip the races for a few days until Pete paid me off. I was ready to fall apart when Mr. Gunn threw in the sponge. That's it, Harry. Don't tell me you're tired. Certainly not. I don't even know what the concept means. It's just that this phase of the operation is over. Great. Now I can ball it up. Is there anything else I can do for you before I hit the town? As a matter of fact, there is. Just type up a few labels. Sure, sure. It's the least I can do. Then assemble the copies of the manuscript and mail them out. Consider it done. Now, let me have the label copy. USSR, People's Republic of China, France, UAR. What the hell is this all about? Agents in all those countries? Yes, Harry. Agents of destruction. What, what are you talking about? I told you you would be the first one to know. Know what? 
Do you remember all the reference material you typed? How can I forget? That was for evaluation purposes. I, I don't get it. We were evaluating whether your species should continue or whether you represented a menace to the galaxy. And how do we make out? Badly. The decision was to eliminate you. You can't do that. Oh, we're not going to do that. You are going to do that yourselves. You see, the manuscript you typed is a scientific textbook for weapons beyond your small scientific store of knowledge. Each one has the capacity to destroy every living thing on this planet. By distributing it to nations on every continent, we will hasten your demise. But suppose they decide that the weapons are too heavy to use. You might be leading us to permanent peace. That's possible, but hardly likely. Either way, we win. If you can make peace among yourselves, then we will win anyhow. It's all a pipe dream. I just won't mail them. I am prepared for that reaction, too. I'll just have to write you off, Harry. I've got more than one string to my bow, thanks to you. Wait and see what happens. Who's there? It's me, Harry. I got the money you won. Come in, Pete. It's about time. I've been waiting for the dough. Give it to me. Here it is, kid. Three big ones. So long, Harry. I hated to do that, but uh, it was you or me, and I like me better. <laughs> you haven't won yet, Mr. Gunn. Who are you talking to? Get out now, Pete. While you can. Please pay attention. What's going on? Who is that? I'm, I'm getting out of here. There is $1,000 underneath the envelopes on the end table. Mail the envelopes and the money is yours. What? There will be another $1,000 waiting for you when you return with the postal receipts. A, a grand? <laughs> Just for lugging these to the post office? <laughs> hey, sounds screwy, but hey... The dough is real enough. Hey, did, did you say no gag? What am I doing? Talking to the air? Well, uh, if there's anybody here, uh, just get the other thousand ready. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. What have I got to lose? <laughs> Harry Dorn gave his life in what was perhaps the first unselfish action of his miserable existence. And it seems for naught. But then again, perhaps not. Just as Mr. Gann underestimated Harry's greed, he may also have miscalculated the corruption of the world's leaders. They may set Mr. Gann's sinister plans back indefinitely. At least we hope so. I'll be back shortly. And so we close our tale of terror. The path that took Harry Dorn across the frontier of fear was a costly one for him. He paid for his moment of greed with his life. But in the final analysis, Harry was only a straw in the wind. His entrances and exits are over. But what of us, the human race? Our cast included Jerry Stiller, Paul Tripp, Bryna Rayburn, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>